Welcome again. I'm Ron Nepstowski. I'm with a very talented man right here from Connecticut, SAG actor Stephen Danilo. How's How you it doing? Going? How you doing, Ron? All right. Good, good, good. Have fun getting over here. I did. You're meeting a lot of wonderful people. There's a lot of interesting people this, out there. Uh, this is a great place to meet a lot of people over it here. Is. So I've seen you chatting with a lot of females over there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> hey. I'm just kidding. Stephen, Stephen, when did you start out in this business, basically? Uh, I've been doing this since I was 16. Mm -hmm. 16 years old, I decided, you know what? I, I just kind of always knew that I wanted to be an actor and just took a long time to get where I am now and I have a long way to go, but, you know, we're getting there. Okay, who, who would you say is your main motivation um, back then, maybe even still right now, to keep you going? Back then, I'd say some of the bigger stars are probably people around my age, like Leonardo DiCaprio, <coughs> um, uh, Ben Affleck, you know, people like that, which, you know, I looked at them and I'm like, you know what, I can do this. You know, mm -hmm. we have things in common, I'd watch their biographies, and, yeah. um, you know, and just... I came from a working middle class family, you know, had no idea anything about the industry, you know, they yeah. wanted me to be a cop, and so uh, <laughs> I had no support, no help, they're like, well, you want to be what, you know, and so I'm just, I had to figure it out on my own. Well, why do you, why do you think that, every, I, I know so many actors, actresses out there, you know, they're saying, well, you know, get a real job, things like that, I mean, why don't you think there's that much support for people getting in this business? I, I know it's a difficult business, but... It's difficult, I can understand the instability. Um, mm -hmm. You know, it, it's. I've had probably like 50 something jobs in my life. You know, we bounce around and it, it's just unstable. Your parents worry about social security. What, do, what are you gonna yeah. do when you retire? Uh, you know, you should have a house and kids by now. You know, I'm not <laughs> what my family quite wanted the only guy in the family to be. I got a lot of sisters and yeah. nieces and stuff, but I was supposed to be the one to take over the family, you know, and uh, be the next guy and, and follow my father's footsteps. And okay. I wanted to be an actor and they just didn't get it you know there's no money in that you don't have a chance it's fierce competition mm -hmm. you know and I, you can't let that stop you you know you just keep plugging away at it with the competition wise do you think th there's so many actors out there that are trying but not really trying so sometimes I would even disagree sometimes you know with the whole competition thing what because I know you're always out there everywhere I see you're <laughs> out there working, yeah. you're always working uh, what makes you you know, strive above the rest, in your opinion. Well, you know, everybody said when I was younger, you know, you got your whole life ahead of you. You know, oh, mm -hmm. take your time, whatever. Well, I'm almost 30. I don't have my whole life ahead of me. We're hitting midlife crisis here, and <laughs> uh, I don't have the money anymore, and I don't have my house anymore, and I don't have any of the things that I started building. And one of the biggest hang-ups in my career was the fact that I had trouble, and anybody can relate to this in this, in this profession, balancing a 9 to 5, Monday to Friday job with the insurance benefits and everything, and then doing your, your movie work, which yeah. sometimes it's a day of extra work, sometimes it's a role, sometimes it's months of work, you know, and you never know when you're going to get that phone call. So, you know, I had to finally decide, you know what, do I want the house? Do I want the nice apartment with the furniture and the dogs and the relationship for eight years? And I just threw it all <laughs> away and said, you know, I'm only getting older. The competition's getting fierce. This is what I'm called to do. It's like, mm -hmm. I just, I wake up with it on my mind. I want to do it. I'm not happy unless I'm in a studio or I'm on a set with somebody. I'm happy yeah. doing extra work because I'm there where it's happening, you know? And, and this is, I can't expect anybody else to understand yeah. You know, they have that stable route in their head, and that's great. I wish I had that. I wish I woke up and said, gee, I want to be a cop. I'd have a house right now. I'd have a family. I'd have everything. But, you know, you got to go with your passion. But you won't be happy. I won't that's, be happy. Uh, I've tried thing. it. I've tried it, and, and I've had some pretty good jobs, you know, mm -hmm. and some good money-making jobs, but I'm not happy. <laughs> but you never so. know. I mean, you're in this business. Why not make the big bucks in this business when, yeah. I mean... Uh, there's a lot of billionaires out there in this business. And so. you know what? You can't go into this business necessarily looking to be rich. I don't do it for the money. I would like to make enough money to get by. Mm -hmm. But as far as um, if I could just pay my bills on this and do what I do now the rest of my life, I'm happy. You know? I'm happy. Wonderful. So, uh, Let's talk about some of your um, recent work that you've been doing. Well, let's go back to the smidgen then. What was your very first project that you could remember uh, doing starting out in the business? One of the first things was probably a theater project. I got involved in theater first. Mm -hmm. um, I started in theater arts class, and that's what got me started, and I said I liked it. And then, you know what, I started doing uh, auditions for some independent um, theater productions, mm -hmm. and I just came up with some weird monologues. What did I know about monologues at the time? And mm -hmm. I just passed the interviews, and or the auditions, and I got the parts, and I did uh, Joseph and Amazing Technical, the dream coat. Um, that's a great part, yeah. Yeah, and I was, I was offered the lead, and <laughs> I didn't want to do the long hair thing. I just, there was something about it, it just wasn't me, and so I, I settled for Brother is a car. I'm like, I'll be in the show, you know, I'll do the dance numbers, I'll do the exposure, but I don't want to do the lead, I'm not into the singing and all that. Yep. And then I moved on to a fine line, 
and that was another independent film about um, basically kind of racism and two yuppie white boys go to uh, I think it was like a was it Bridgeport school and they came from a wealthy background and their parents got a divorce long story short you got this odd couple of brothers in this all black school and my role was um, young 15 year old Brandon Salinger and um, my brother played a Matthew Broderick character his older brother you know level-headed, all astute, and you know, there's me walking around in my, you know, homie G clothes, and yeah. the ladies' man, and everybody loved it, you know, and I'm just like, what's the big deal? We're in an all-black school, but they love me, you know, you gotta loosen up, you know, and so that, it was a comedy, and people loved it, and I was nervous, I was nervous, because we, we did it in um, New Haven, we had a, 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 an all-black audience, and uh -huh. they had me, the director was black, and he had me saying some funny stuff, like, you know, assalamu alaikum and stuff, and I'm like, oh boy, this is not gonna go down well, so uh, I did it, and they loved it, I got flowers for the first time. You know, it was great, and uh, so I just kept doing stuff like that. Is there something that you regretted that you did not do? Oh, yeah. That you were offered? When I first, um, probably about 18 years old, I decided, you know, I wasn't, like I said before, I wasn't that popular in school. Everybody knew who I was. I got along with everybody, but I wasn't where I wanted to be. I wasn't one of the jocks or whatever, and I wanted to be an actor, a, a model at first. Uh -huh. And at the, at the time, I still was a little awkward in my youth. You know, you change and you get old, and you grow into your looks, and... I wanted to be an Abercrombie model because everybody shopped at Abercrombie and Fitch, all the popular kids. And I'm like, one day I'm going to hang in that store and then what? There you well, go. Well, at 22 years old, I go and uh, get a job at Abercrombie and Fitch. And people are like, you're not even going to get a job there because you don't, you're not good looking enough. And I'm like, watch, I'll get a job. I got the job, worked for $6 an hour, I hated it, folding clothes. Just to get the connections with the main office so I can send my stuff. Yeah. And I did, and then I quit the job. A couple months later, I get a phone call from a photographer out there. You know, why don't you fly out here? Blah, 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 you know, and so I talked about it in my family. My family was like, "You're not a model. You're gonna go out there. They're gonna look at you, and they're gonna laugh you out of there. Don't do it." So I didn't do it. A month later, I get a phone call. Why the hell did you turn us down? You know, so uh, basically that was my biggest thing. That could have been a career opportunity for me, and and I would have been happy. You know, and I turned it down. But Stephen, you know what? You're still making it in business. You're growing. You're a SAG actor. Yeah. Congratulations to that. And nothing but the best of in the SAG. It, it does take quite some time, so, so congratulations. Thank you, Stephen, yeah. for being a guest. Thanks for having Thank me Thank you very again. much. All right. Great. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.